Welcome to episode 190 of the Various Subject Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Harmon, joined live from the Vault Studio, the beautiful campus of Grace College and Theological Seminary, by my good friend, my colleague, my co-host, and the man who will lead over 400 freshmen on the hike tomorrow, Mm -hmm. John Scott Sloat. Doc, what's going on? Well, we're just on the cusp of the start of an academic year. Yeah, you had uh, you did some advising today. I did a lot of advising today. Uh, so tell me about the day. When did you get here? Today's Monday. We're yep. recording on Monday. Yep. What time did you get here? What time did you finish advising? And was there lunch in there somewhere? There was lunch in there. They've, they've, they've changed the way they schedule. So they block in like a 90-minute break for lunch. Nice. So more than you need, but also just time to like – pause. Awesome. <laughs> so the first chunk is like 9 to 11 in 20-minute increments. Okay. And you had that whole block full? Yep. Everybody and, show up? Yes. Okay. And then 12.30 to we just uh, like 3.45-ish. Okay. 20-minute increments. Nice. So – you do most of the talking in those meetings? Uh, actually, this year's crowd was was relatively talkative. Rather chatty. Good. Yeah. Um, I, I love meeting new students. It's always fascinating to hear their story. Like the first advisee I had this morning, I, I pull up her information and I look and she's from Napoleon, Ohio, my hometown. Yeah, that's pretty wild. And I look at her address. She lived like – Two blocks from where my grandparents lived. That's wild. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we have to start right here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did, did you know? You know, and so bonded over that. Yeah. Did, did she know? She knew what. Uh, she knew the house where my grandparents lived. Yeah. Nice. I mean, my, both my grandparents passed away a little over three years ago now. Okay. But um, no one has moved into the house. So. Oh. Okay. Did she know the pizza place that you love so much? I forgot to ask her. How did you not ask about that? <laughs> I anticipated that trumping your grandparents no, no, as, no, as no, the no, first no. question you would ask. No. No. And then – What's uh, the name of the pizza? Hawks? Hawks. Hawks Pizza. And yeah. it's a drive through right? Yeah. You, you like – You can't go – you can't dine in. You can't dine – do they deliver? They do. Uh, wait. Do they? You know, I don't know. But But you can drive your car and it's like – we went one time. Yeah. And you like drive into like this covered area, yeah. And you you call on a pizza ahead of time, and they bring it out to your car, yeah. Load you up, and then you just drive out the other side. Correct. Um, kind of like you're getting. I, I, I don't, I'm trying to think of a. I mean, it's a drive through. But you you drive you, through the building. Through the building, yes. not like a window. <clears throat> yeah. So maybe. So it's kind of like. If you if you go to get your car serviced at like the dealership, like at the Honda dealership, you and you and I both yeah use yeah similar yeah like there's like a garage door bay that mm-hmm. you pull into, and then they come up to you and you know they ask if you've ordered and you know they have other stuff besides pizza there, so, so it's like a pizza drive through slash like convenience store, like you can buy beverages and. Mm. Other things there as well, as opposed to having ordered pizza. So interesting, yeah. So anyway, I um, can't believe you didn't ask about this. <laughs> That's the most bewildering message really? I've ever okay. heard. Yeah, yeah, I know this. Well, this is you talk about this pizza place. I do. It's great. Not often, but when Napoleon comes up, the pizza place is usually yeah. right there with it. Yeah. Um. So and then you know there was another uh, there was a student who. Um, she was the go-to babysitter for Zach in Ohio's family. Oh, really? Yeah, so she's from his church, and she was Zach and Sarah's go-to babysitter for Interesting. Like many years now. Okay. So That poor girl. Yeah. And then uh, I told you about this. I met with a student who uh, – is at Joel in Ohio's. Yeah, church. I don't I don't know if Joel's a listener. I don't know either. He's probably reading a book. Probably. Yeah. Probably. But so it's it's fun 
to have those built-in pre-existing connections. Of, oh, 100%. Oh, yeah, that's great. I know your pastor. Well, I, I, Your pastor lived in my basement. <laughs> well, and you want to know what? That's one of the benefits of being in an institution for a long time. Yes. You begin to see some of those students come through again. Yeah. Yep. Uh, their recommendation, their kids, yep, their absolutely. parishioners g- g- pop on through, and, and that's really kind of fun and exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And tomorrow you – we should probably tell students about the – our our listeners about the hike. They yeah. may not be familiar with what the hike is here at Grace. Yeah, so um, – the hike is a tradition. I think it's we're in like 17 or 18 years of the hike. This is the start of my 18th year. So, But I also wasn't that involved with undergrads my first few years. I was all on the seminary side. So, so. my first year at Grace was the first hike. So fall of 06 was the first hike. OK. So my entire tenure here. That's right. It came with you. Um, <laughs> I had but, nothing to do with the institution. But basically what it is uh, tomorrow is we take all the first year students, put them in the same color T-shirt – and uh, they break up into, I think, 30 different teams. Mm-hmm. And they uh, ba- basically the end goal is to win a boat race on the lake. Uh, Not just on, any boat, though. It's, it's one made of cardboard that they build. And duct tape. Don't forget the duct tape. Yeah, they need duct, duct tape as well, as well as a few other items, yeah. uh, milk jugs, uh, <laughs> pool noodles. Yeah. Uh, things like that. Things to actually, you know, make it buoyant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so they uh, they do a good – so they have to build that boat, but then they do a scavenger hunt around campus gaining clues. And for each clue they get right, they get a certain amount of money and they can use that at the store to buy boating materials. OK. Um, so, yeah, we have them do that. OK. So that's that's tomorrow. And I, and I – over. Overseas a strong word. Um, I am like the the figurehead for it. So I give the rules in the morning. If there's a rules dispute, uh, I get to make the decision on it. I mm-hmm. wear a funny hat um, all day, and it's supposed to be it's supposed to be the hottest week of the year. It's supposed to be hot tomorrow. Disgustingly hot. Yeah. And it's not that the temperature is that high. It's more the humidity is that high, mm-hmm. and it feels like summer is finally here. Like it. Like it hasn't felt super super hot yet. Uh, we've had some we've had some days like this. You think so? Yeah, like think this so. that yeah. are just muggy and nasty yeah. and not as many as I would say in a normal summer. Yeah. But anyway, that's tomorrow it's going to be hot. We're going to be preaching hydration. Yeah. Um it's important. Yep, it's uh but it's a long day. It's usually a good day. <laughs> um as long as it doesn't, you know, rain or anything, which should be fine. Yeah. Well, if you'd like to contact the show and uh, ask John questions about the hike, you can find us on X slash Twitter at VNS Pod. You can email the show, various sundry podcast at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook and on YouTube. And we would love for you to leave a five star rating and a review on whatever platform you use to access the show. Particularly Apple Podcast. Yes, in particular, yes. All right, John, let's talk some sports. Sure. Uh, Well, I mean, NFL preseason ramping up. Yep. Have you watched your beloved J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets? No, they haven't been on TV in my area, so I haven't watched them. I've seen some highlights, seen some clips. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has not played, though. No, he's playing this Saturday, though, against the Giants. All right. Which you know, there's a little something there, right? They want to, they want to stick it to the Giants a little bit <laughs> uh, they, with their new toy. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but and they know, signed Dalvin Cook. We signed think, Dalvin yeah. Cook this last week. Uh, he did not appear in Hard Knocks yeah. on Tuesday, like we thought maybe he would. But yeah, they signed Dalvin Cook. Um, Zach Wilson is completing short passes <laughs> in the preseason. <laughs> Your which, favorite Mormon. Which, uh, you know, feels like – feels radically different from <laughs> the past uh, Mormon inability to complete short passes. So okay. that that's new in the preseason. We beat the Panthers last week pretty handily. Oh, that was two weeks ago. I'm not even sure if we beat the Buccaneers. We, Scores are irrelevant in the preseason, um, especially now. But no, virtually no starters played. 
Yeah. Virtually no starters played. Yeah. I mean, other teams, though, in the second game have played starters Mm -hmm. more than the Jets have been playing. Yeah. And the Jets are playing some starters in the third game. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, the Texans played C.J. Stroud the entire first half of the second. That makes sense to me. He's a rookie trying to get him reps. Makes a lot of sense. Same thing with Bryce Young. I did not understand why the Texans, in the first preseason game, they played C.J. Stroud two series. Play him for the first half. Play him, him for the first half. He needs know. the reps. Yep. And he once he got some reps, he actually looked decent. You know, like he yeah. got, like you could tell he like got comfortable a little so bit. So like, let me ask you this. Of the Ohio State quarterbacks in the league right now, mm-hmm. who's your favorite? Justin Fields. Justin Fields still. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a possibility that the Bears are good. That he has a big year. Really? That he takes the step from being a guy that you're like eh, yeah, to like he's a legit that he becomes a legit top 10 hmm. NFL quarterback. Wow. Wow. They finally got him a weapon. Uh Who's DJ that? Moore. Okay. Got him from Carolina as part of the trade okay. for the number one pick. And in the preseason game, most recent preseason game, uh, Justin Fields had two touchdown passes. Okay. Um, I think in neither of them did the ball travel in the air more than 10 yards. Hmm. One was a dump off to a running back who scored from like 40 yards out. The other was a wide receiver screen to DJ Moore that he took to the house from like 50 yards out. So it's not just Justin Fields making plays out there. Yes. Um, and I think I think they will they will figure out how to use his legs without exposing him to unnecessary punishment. Well, without being destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I think he could have a big year. Hmm. So um Anyway, uh, I have been paying more attention to the college football side of things, as I'm wont to do. Yeah. And Ohio State has still not named their starting quarterback. So who do they have? Like who are – The two guys are Kyle McCord okay. and Devin Brown. Okay. Kyle McCord was the backup last year. Okay. He is a five-star recruit. Uh, this will be his third year in the program. The redshirt year in yes. there? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so um, he was also Marvin Harrison Jr.'s high school quarterback. Oh, wow. So going into the season, in the offseason, everybody thought he's the guy. Is he – after the season, is he eligible for the draft even though he redshirted? He would be. Okay. Because it's just three years removed from high school regardless of redshirting. It's just three years removed. Okay. But – the the story of, of training camp for Ohio State and even the summer workouts was Devin Brown, who's a year behind him, four star recruit, came in and started lighting it up. Hmm. And um, Ryan Day just announced uh, the expectation was that Ohio State would name their starter today, this Monday, because it's two weeks now before the first game. You you think. You want to get your starter as many reps as possible in practice and have made your decision. He came out today and said, I'm not ready to name a starter. It's too close. Wow. So it could continue into the first game or two, I think. So when when's the first game of college football? Like when does college football in well, earnest start? The real start is Labor Day weekend. So okay. September 2nd is when Ohio State kicks off. That weekend is the first real – like there's some games this this upcoming weekend, but it's called Week Zero. So there's like eight games. And do they put big ticket games on Week Zero? There's nearly no big games. Okay, so really, so really Labor, Labor Day, Day weekend, weekend is the start. Okay. And then the week after that, I think uh, is the NFL. Start. NFL starts in earnest. Yeah. Well, the Thursday was the first. Game. Sure, but, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. The fact that. Devin Brown has been able to compete and basically make it even. He's more athletic. Mm. The knock has been, is he able to 
throw the ball as well as Kyle McCourt. And apparently he's made it close enough that the coaches are not ready to decide. Wow. So. We, um, anything you want to hear from Hard Knocks? Uh, we, okay. I know, I know we're running over. I'll give you up to three minutes. Up to three minutes? Yes. Whoa. Go. Uh, Will McDonald from <laughs> Iowa State. They followed him around and he got piercings on camera. It looked horrifying. Like eyebrow piercings, Ooh. unattractive. That's sensitive skin too. Yeah, he he said he said he, I am doing everything I can to not cry on camera. <laughs> but he's a weird guy. Like he he's a quirky dude. Okay. Um, Quinn and Williams. Uh, are you familiar with Quinn and Williams? No. So he's our nose tackle. Just got a big contract uh, against the Carolina Panthers defense in like combined practices. He claimed to have 10 sacks during the practice. <laughs> okay. And they have him and Aaron Rodgers counting up the number of sacks. Um, he claimed to have 10 sacks. So we're rooting for a big season from Quinn and Williams. Okay. Um, Aaron Rodgers uh, was mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers. The O-line got dressed down in front of the whole team uh, mm-hmm. for playing poorly. And that seems to be the weak spot for the Jets is the offensive line. All right. Um. Uh, Makai Becton, do you know that name? No. He came up, he was in one scene. Uh, he's the Jets' first round pick from a few years ago out of Louisville, offensive tackle. He's like six foot eight and like 380 pounds. And he slimmed down to about 350. Hmm. Uh, I just remember his draft po- profile was gave his height, weight, and the note about him was love soul food, was what it said about him. Um, Is there any food he doesn't love? Yeah. But he's he's had knee problems, and he comes over and gives Aaron Rodgers a hug. And Aaron Rodgers is not small. No. Right? How, how tall do you think? 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, I'd go 6'4", probably. This guy dwarfed yeah. him. <laughs> And Aaron Rodgers goes, hey, let's do lunch this week. Like they work in an office park, right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but the offensive line got dressed down. Every, everything else looks pretty pretty solid out there. Very excited for hmm. the season and where this team's going. Okay. How'd I do? Uh, you're at two minutes and 35 seconds. I'm so done. You're good. I'm you're done. Good. Yep. All right. All right. So, John, our topic for today is – we're going to talk about spiritual mentors. Yeah. Uh, and not just in some generalized sense, but specifically uh, mentors in our own lives that have been uh, very significant in our spiritual development, spiritual growth. Um, maybe before we get into specifics, though, we could um, – I'm curious what you think. How do you think the church – how well do you think the church does in general in this area? Um, in mentoring, mentoring relationships? I don't know. Uh, it seems to me that for people that want mentoring and mm-hmm. ask for mentoring, it's pretty easily found. Okay. Uh, but unless they seek it out, which I think are few people, it just doesn't happen. That's my sense. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Um Though, and maybe this is just because of the context that we work in, I do think it is something that um, starting with millennials and then increasing in in Gen Z, that more and more of them seek it out, Hmm. more and more proactively seeking it out. So you see a positive toward millennials and kudos to millennials and Gen Z. Yeah. Okay, you see that as a positive trait. That they are more proactive in seeking okay. mentoring. Yes, hmm. I think that is true. Um, are you surprised that I'm saying something positive about millennials and Gen Zers? I don't feel like I'm always no, Debbie no, Downer on no. them. No, I, I think I think normally uh, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's sort of like a millennials or yeah. Gen Z, you know, ruining our country in America, you know, but yeah. – but I think you're right. I think there is a – specifically compared to Gen Xers, mm-hmm. I think there's a 
more openness to those sorts of things. Yeah. I don't remember who I first heard this from. I've heard it from several sources. But um, I remember when I was a college student, someone saying to me, every guy, every person, but everyone needs a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy. A Paul meaning like a a spiritual mentor, an older Mm -hmm. person who is further down the spiritual road. A Barnabas. A, Somebody a, they fight with in ministry? Exactly. Or? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a peer, someone yeah. who is, you know, about your same, you know, same spiritual maturity experience, et cetera. And then a Timothy, someone who's younger than you, that you are investing in yourself. Yeah. Now, how do you, uh, when you think about mentoring, do you think like, my goodness, I'm taking this person under my wing for life? Or no. is it more like, Hey, how about we meet for six weeks or a month or a year or whatever it is? Yeah, I think it's um, – I, I understand the term broadly. Okay. I think um, there are various forms and in, uh, degrees of mentoring. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of it is more intentional and some of it is less intentional. Um, and I think that it's something that – Generally, for it to happen, uh, ten, there needs to be some measure of intentionality, but the degree of that can can vary. Hmm. So I I don't think there's a one size fits all mold of well you have to meet every week or every couple of weeks or it even has to be this like formal set we meet every so often. You read a book, you read a book of the Bible, you yeah. do. XYZ. There's a lot of yeah. different forms that I think it can take. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to put a one size fits all on it, but, um, so yeah, I think, uh, both of us have benefited significantly Mm -hmm. from people investing in our lives. And so, um, you know, in one sense, this is an opportunity for us to pay public as public as this podcast is. Yeah. (laughs) Public. By the way, (laughs) I got breakfast with a guy this morning. And as a guy I hadn't seen in probably five or six years, I was like, you know, my job changed. I said, yeah, I heard something about that on the pod. But, okay, good to good to good to know. Well, we also found out somebody else is listening. Yes, and we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. We just need to double down on the number one rule. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, let's talk spiritual mentors. <laughs> you suddenly got very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to go first? Or you want me sure, to go sure, first? sure. Okay. I'll go first. My, uh, for the life of me, I can't remember this guy's name. Isn't that sad? Well, yeah. I mean I saw you, you listed him out and I was I, – I had a chuckle of – it's listed as Guy in Chattanooga. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> like it's just some random dude. <laughs> so I, I cannot – remember this guy's name for the life of me. And I am struggling to even remember how I got connected with him, but it was through my youth group at church. They had put basically aged group guys Mm -hmm. uh, with a a youth leader of some kind. And me and another friend and maybe one other guy got paired with uh, this guy, probably in his early 30s, had a couple of young kids, Mm -hmm. and uh, he – he wore a suit like he was he was a businessman yeah. and he would take us to Dairy Queen every Wednesday night for probably a year mm-hmm. and would buy us blizzards which we appreciated who doesn't love a good blizzard and i just remember talking about life spiritual life testimonies yeah. all, and all so these how things. old were you at this point like junior high you said 13 14 yeah yeah, yeah 13 14 years old late junior high maybe yeah that'd be that'd be junior high yeah not quite and, high school and i remember having I remember I was a counselor at our uh, church's camp, and I had his son in my cabin. When we moved away, he and his wife threw our family a party. Um, for, and I, it kills me that I can't remember this guy's name. But I just remember just like – and I can't, I can't tell you anything specifically that he taught me mm-hmm. or engaged with me about. But I just remember him spending time with me and yeah. talking about spiritual things. That, that's mostly what I remember. Yeah. OK. Shout out to Guy in Chattanooga. Guy in Chattanooga. Maybe it'll come to me one day. You should have. You, you could have texted your parents. Maybe they would know. Nah, their memory is far worse than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go with my uh, the first one I've got here is a guy named Don Willman. Don Willman. He was uh, he was the uh, kind of youth pastor at our church my sophomore year in high school. Just one year. But that lo- that one year was uh, was very transformative in my experience spiritually. Um, he it was interesting. He grad he had graduated from college, and he was involved in Campus Crusade crew. Hmm. And I didn't know it at the time, but basically he was taking the model of crew discipleship and using it with me. Oh. in um, in our youth group. Did you feel hoodwinked when you found that out? Uh, no, but I did chuckle when okay. I went off to college <laughs> and got involved in crew, and I'm like, "No, whoa, whoa, come on!" Like, just like, this is where he got the secret sauce. Okay. Good, good play, Don. Yeah. Good play. Well played, well played, sir. But uh, yeah, he spent one-on-one time with me, and he also uh, one of the things he did well was um, getting me some initial experience in doing ministry things and mm. delegating things to me. Yeah. Um, the first sermon I ever preached was because of him. We went to help at this like soup kitchen place. Um, and we get there and he says to me, okay, so there's going to be like a service that we're going to do that, that we're going to do. And you're going to preach. Excuse me? <laughs> How much lead time did he give you for this? Half hour. Half hour? 45 minutes maybe. My goodness. Yeah. He's like, it only has to be like 10 minutes. I'd have been like, he should have given me a week. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? I still remember the text I preached on. It was Romans 10, 9. Hmm. I still remember that. But he was just really good at um, connecting with me relationally, teaching me spiritual disciplines, you know, walking through stuff going on in my life. And so grateful for him. He is now a pastor in New England. Pastor in church in he's he's on the like New Hampshire. New Hampshire side. They're near Dartmouth. Okay. So that's Ivy's. like right on the borderline with New Hampshire and Vermont. Okay. He, they they're on the New Hampshire side. Planted a church there. Nice. And uh he's been there a while and you know, that's a hard area to plant a church. Oh, yeah. And God has really blessed it. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Very much grateful for Don Williman. Nice, nice. Do uh, you have a name for your next one, John? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this guy's uh, <laughs> Jamie Kendrew okay. was my youth pastor when I moved to Pittsburgh. And so my family got involved with this uh, – I suppose you called it a church plant, um, but it was a, it was a Willow Creek style church, mm-hmm. and they didn't have a youth pastor, and so my parents were ready to leave because they were like, we need, we need something for our, we have three boys, we need something for them, yeah, and they said we're actually hiring somebody, and so sort of right at the start of my senior year, I think he was he was hired, so we were there almost a year mm-hmm. uh, when we got settled in this church. And uh, he became sort of the youth pastor that I kind of explored, called a ministry with, mm-hmm. got, uh, like you were saying, first opportunities to speak, sort of cut teeth in ministry, engaging with people, praying uh, with others, leading others in uh, discipleship sort of movements. And uh, yeah, yeah, he really gave me a lot of opportunity as well as connecting relationally. We did a lot of different things together, including he was the one that got me into rock climbing uh, when I was in college. Okay. So, I would go rock climbing with him like three times a week. We'd take kids from the youth group up there. Hmm. It was a lot of fun. Um, okay. And I remember him like helping me connect relationally with uh, other people in the youth group and really anybody no matter who they were. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's a skill that I think I've, I think I've always had but sharpened in, yeah. in his tutelage uh, at that time. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah, Jamie Kendrew. Shout out Jamie Kendrew. All right, so I'm going to go. My next one is a guy named Mike Thacker. Mike Thacker. So when I was uh, at OU in college, he uh, discipled me, and um, he was an older student, so not quite the traditional undergrad. He was a few years older 
um, who had just gotten a late start at college for various okay. reasons. But um, so he was really good at um, giving me uh, life advice. Hmm. So he was discipling me when I was a freshman in college. And, you know, you know, I just met with 15 freshmen today. And, you know, th- let's just say there are varying levels of maturity among Among 18-year-olds, really? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's shocking. Yeah. 18-year-old men. Yeah. Varying levels. Yeah. Interesting. Hot take. Um, and so, I mean, I can remember specific – uh, conversations that that Mike had with me, he was very helpful in helping me think through the proper way to relate to young women. Mm-hmm. Even just in terms of thinking about, you know, taking initiative, leading, but being you know not overbearing, or even just thinking through knowing why you're spending time with. A young woman and not trying to be manipulative or, you know, blurring, intentionally blurring lines between friendship and dating and those sorts of things. And, um, but he was also one of the earliest men in my life to spot, um, giftings in the area of teaching and writing. Hmm. And I remember I was in his, I was in his wedding as a groomsman. And I remember him saying at the rehearsal dinner, you know, he did something where he said something about each of the groomsmen and, you know, how he knew them. And and I remember him saying, I am fully convinced that someday I'll be reading his books. (laughs) And that was literally the first time anyone had ever said, I think you can write books or you will write books someday. And that stuck in my head as someone as something like, someone thinks I could do that. I wonder if I could. That seems crazy that I could do that. Well, he doesn't have the gift of prophecy. I was but... about to say. <laughs> <laughs> he was just wise and could spot gifts. And so grateful for – Some would say that is the gift of prophecy. <laughs> grateful for Mike Thacker. Um, okay, uh, my next one. You know, actually, and is actually a current Grace uh, D Men student, Tim Clothier. Yeah. Uh, so I got I I got connected with Tim because I got connected with uh, Ken Bickle. Mm-hmm. So I was in Ken Bickle's Scripture Interpretation class and enjoyed talking to him and enjoyed mm-hmm. engaging with him in class. Yeah. And I had known Tim through through a couple of different areas. And I did not know this at the time, but Ken actually came to Tim and goes, hey, you should mentor that guy. I do it myself, but I just don't have the time. <laughs> and so I met with Tim probably uh, just about weekly for th- three or four years uh, hmm. through college and then a good chunk of seminary as well. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was it was under Tim that I've got more ministry experience. I was able to preach for the first time, Yeah, uh, wrote out a sermon series for the church I was in during that time, mm-hmm. uh, was able to teach weekly. He was, he was a youth pastor here in Warsaw, mm-hmm. was able to teach weekly uh, at uh, on, on Wednesday night, like youth group night sort of things, and then taught a junior high Sunday school for, I think, two years. So mm-hmm. it was sort of under him that I was able to flesh a lot of those things out. And, and uh, struggle and fail, and I, I lived with him and his wife for a couple summers as well. And yeah. so, yes, uh, Tim was a was a big part. Uh, in fact, would go like I remember their second child being born, and I was sort of like the on call middle of the night person to sort of come in, yeah, and sleep in the house while their first child was upstairs asleep until uh, some grandparent coverage could get the to town in the morning. Yeah, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Okay, sleeping sleeping on the couch and getting getting screamed at at you know four in the morning. <laughs> Uncle John, where are you? <laughs> Screaming at uh, four a.m. There so, you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my next one is a guy named Brian McAllister. Have I met Brian? I don't know. Maybe. 
because I definitely recognize the name yeah. because you talked about him. But I, yeah, I, I may have met him at one point. I don't, I don't really to think remember. What context you would have met him in, though? But maybe, maybe I follow could him on social a, social media. Maybe, maybe could it have been? It must have been. He's never been on campus here. So if you have, it was maybe at a conference. Yeah, it might have been TGC or T4G. So, yeah. Anyway, he he after. Um, after I was discipled by Mike Thacker, starting my sophomore year, Brian started discipling me. He was the campus director of crew at Ohio University. Mm-hmm. And uh, he discipled me for three years. And then when I graduated, I went on staff with crew at Ohio University. So he was then my boss hmm. for another five. And so he continued to kind of mentor me in that role. And um, his was the uh, – the first um, godly marriage I got to see up close. Hmm. And I saw how he interacted with his wife and I saw how he uh, parented his kids. And um, he was the first marriage where I saw a godly husband who led um, in a way that would that would honor his wife. Hmm. And his wife is terrific. She is um, – and she's she's no doormat. She is a very gifted and um, intelligent and, um, you know, she's – she reminds me a lot of Kate <laughs> in terms of just like someone that you might think, oh, she's a strong personality. She could be difficult to lead, you know, mm-hmm. not at all. And yet – Brian went out of his way to uh, uh, enable her to use her gifts. And, um, yeah, Brian just – he modeled for me that kind of marriage that I wanted and he modeled ministry for me. What does it look like to to live as a man in ministry and the sort of demands on your time and managing Hmm. that well? Um, And so, um, yeah, grateful for him. He's a – he's still a friend to this day. And uh, very much I, – I, I might have mentioned him to you. I saw – he now lives in the Columbus area. Okay. And so we uh, – when we when Kate and I were in Columbus back in January, we went to to hang out with them. And nice. So just a, a great, great man. Really appreciate his role in my life. So – um, my, my last person this, – this is going to be awkward. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, it is you. Uh, uh, I – was formerly in your mentor group through yeah. uh, all of seminary and a bit after seminary as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so I, as I've thought about it, like just – I don't think there is a human that has shaped my thinking around the Bible and around spiritual things more than you have. Uh, and that would – I mean that's done through a number of things, through classes, through mm-hmm. mentor groups, through uh, – quite frankly, through this podcast, um, through mm-hmm. basement conversations <laughs> uh, and a number yeah. number of other spaces as well as, you know, sitting in your basement and – all right, let's see how – let's see how Matt handles this when his kids <laughs> does X, Y, Z yes. and just sort of like getting my popcorn out, ready to yeah. watch. And, yeah. and, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's uh, been a lot of fun to – uh, yeah, to have you be a part of that, and for you and Tim, you know, morphing those relationships mm-hmm. into uh, adult friendships has yeah. been has been really good as well. Yes, yeah, that's that is one really enjoyable feature of being in a position to mentor other people is that at least in some cases, the relationship morphs from. Mm-hmm. I'm mentoring this person to we're just really good friends now Mm -hmm. and mutually encouraging. So to use the analogy from earlier, it kind of transforms from a Paul and Timothy to a Paul and Barnabas kind of Before they fight. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They got back on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, that's one of the the cool things about the kind of ministry I get to have Mm -hmm. Seeing that kind of transition, so uh, I'll mention just briefly here at the end, um, my relationship with Doug Moo 
more on the academic side of things, but mm-hmm. also personally, um, and then as well as uh, as well as Greg Beal. Um, What's funny of as of anybody on your list, those are the two that I've met. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but that's part of the fun of being able to bring you into that uh-huh. orbit. Um, no matter how terrifying it really is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I debated putting Don Carson on there because yes, you, you know, I've met you know. Don. Yes. <laughs> oh, that now see if we had a Patreon version of this podcast, we would we would totally be charging we hundreds we, of dollars to tell to that tell, story in full. Yes, <laughs> to tell of our evening with Don Carson, but oh, my alas, goodness. we will not. But anyway, uh, those th- those men modeled the sort of uh, warm-hearted devotional academic rigor mm-hmm. for me that I that I hope that I aspire to yeah uh, in terms of pursuing that and um, having them take interest in me personally outside of the classroom in terms of my spiritual development and and that sort of thing has been a lot of fun and to have a similar sort of morphing of those relationships of mentor to mentee though even though I still feel like I'm not a Barnabas to their Paul kind of thing. Um, but it is fun to, to relate to them. And, now, when you present a paper at, at uh, Evangelical Theological Society, mm-hmm. do either of them show up to your paper presentation as like a, for, as like a former mentor? To it you? varies. Act- Sometimes yes. Sometimes yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, that was fun. That was fun. Um, Part of the reason I even suggest this topic is I feel like I think it is good to have that kind of mentoring experience, mm-hmm. both mentoring others and also being mentored. In fact, one of the thing, one of the downsides of getting older is you start losing mentors or you have fewer and fewer people yeah. who mentor you. Mm-hmm. It's all be, instead of having a Paul, you just have more Barnabases. Yeah. Um, so, but. Yeah, that's. Do, it, do any of your guys listen to the pod? I think Brian does. Yeah, I think Brian might. I think Brian does. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I know he he has. I don't know how consistently. I know sure. he has listened. Sure. So. Anyway, um, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. All right, John. Time now for this day in sports history. All right, this day in sports history, August twenty second. Yeah. Wow, we're coming down to the end of August here. Yeah. Uh, 2023. Uh, th- on this day in 1930, Australian cricket slow medium bowler Percy Horn- Hornibrook uh, takes 7 to 92 as England dismissed for 251 in an innings defeat in the fifth test <laughs> at the Oval Australia regain Ashes 2 to 1. I don't know what any of those words meant. Yeah, that's like you just read Sanskrit or Aramaic. Maybe. Yes, yes. Or like Old English where like I recognize all the words, but yeah. they don't necessarily yeah. syntactically flow together. Yeah. Uh, this one I know. 1984, Met pitcher Dwight Gooden becomes the 11th rookie to strike out 200 batters. Yeah. He was dominant. I, that was before you were born, but I remember yep. watching him pitch as a rookie. He was great. Yep. Um, too bad about the drugs, you know. Yeah. Uh, he did eventually throw a no-hitter. He did. Mm -hmm. He did. With, you know, the team that shall not be named. Yes. Okay. Uh, 2004, after winning the doubles tennis gold medal at the Athens Olympics, Chile's uh, Nicolas uh, Masu wins the men's single gold 6-3, 3-6, 2-6, 6-3, 6-4. Comeback over American uh, Marty Fish. Okay. Okay. I love this guy's name. Uh, 2004, American sprinter Justin Gatlin. Mm-hmm. That's a great name. It is. Uh, wins the coveted Olympic 100-meter gold medal in the Athens in 9.85 seconds ahead of uh, Francis <laughs> Obukule of <laughs> – how did I do there? Obikwilu. Obikwilu um, of Portugal and American Marcy Green. Maurice. Oh, is that Maurice? My bad. Maurice Green. Okay, we got a lot of Olympic ones today. Yeah, 2017 Jamaican team led by Usain Bolt smashes the four by 100 meter relay record in the final at the Beijing Olympics, disqualified in 2017 
as Nesta Carter tested positive for a, for a prohibited substance. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, 2016. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, Thigo Braz da Silva. <laughs> Is it Thigo? What is I believe it? it's Tiago. Tiago? I always want to do that. I believe the H is silent in that. Tiago. Uh, Braz de Silva of Brazil sets Olympic record 6.03 meters uh, to win the men's pole vault gold medal at the Rio de Janeiro Olympic Games. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Well. Who do you like? My goodness. I kind of like Justin Gatlin. Okay. I mean, I really like Dwight Gooden, but I feel like everybody anticipates me picking Dwight Gooden, so I think I'm going to go Justin Gatlin. I can go with Justin Gatlin. All right. One thing you liked. Uh, I'm going with the hike. Okay. By the time this drops, we'll be mid-hike. Yeah. And uh, assuming I upload it on time this evening, <laughs> we'll be mid-hike tomorrow when this drops. Yes, indeed. So, Yes. Uh, yeah. Pr- uh, thoughts and prayers appreciated. Um, but yeah, I think this is my seventh or eighth year in a row doing this. At least, isn't it? Because you didn't you? I mean, when you came back to to be an R an RD, twenty fourteen. Yeah. So starting the the twenty fourteen twenty fifteen school year, right? Uh huh. But I didn't do it that school you year. You didn't. No, and I don't think I did it the fifteen sixteen school year either. Okay. I think it might have been the next year I did it. All right. But, yep, it's a tradition. Unlike any other. Truly, truly unlike any other. <laughs> so I'm going to go with uh, I submitted a book manuscript. Okay. Yeah. To, to whom? To Zondervan. Ah, the, our friends in the Great White North. Yeah. So it is a book I'm co-authoring with an Old Testament professor at another institution – uh, working title is something like Seven Hermeneutical Choices for Studying the Bible's Use of the Bible. Hmm. So primarily focused – well, yeah, I mean not just New Testament use of Old Testament but later Old Testament authors using earlier Old Testament scriptures. Do you get into the Second Temple literature stuff in there as well? Yep. OK. Yep. Yep. So uh, Lord willing, that will come out fall of 24, so a year. Oh, so this wasn't a proposal. This is a full manuscript. It's a full manuscript. Wow. Is this are you publishing it with the guy that did Old Testament use of the Old Testament? Yep. Okay, nice. Yep. So, nice. Yeah. It's always exciting to send that off. Yeah, yeah. Now the editors will send it all back, take out all your Oxford commas. Not this one. Not this one. <laughs> they better not. They better not. Well, I remember you got one book back that had all the Oxford yes. commas removed. Ironically, the one published in England. Yes, yes. I wasn't <laughs> going to name the publisher or the locale of the uh, of the publisher, but uh, yeah, uh, offensive. And they wouldn't. You said, "Please put these yield. back in," they, and they, they said, "No." Yield. That's yeah. Not in fact, I remember I was hosting a Zoom meeting that you were because this was 2020 that you were to be a part of, and I said. Matt's. I told all the professors that were in this meeting, Matt will be late. Uh, his book manuscript came back, and they took out all his Oxford commas. And all the professors <laughs> went, we understand. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. I was not happy about that. But you win some, you lose some. By the way, we spent the episode talking about mentors. And we didn't even mention the Seinfeld episode. Oh. <laughs> Where – Jerry ends up mentoring Banya. Uh-huh. Is that where they come up with the Ovaltine joke? Um, well, I think it's – was it? Maybe. Yeah, it could be. And Jerry's dating the woman who is – Mentored by – Mentored by the woman dating Banya. Yes. And Jerry loses – does he lose respect for her in the midst of all this? Well, he – he can't understand why – how could she be mentored by a woman dating Banya because Banya's bad? <laughs> and then he says, have you seen his act? And then she goes to see his act and she's like – I got to drop this person. Drop this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Jordan in Indiana, uh, he and his lovely wife have been watch- – are watching through Seinfeld. I think oh, for the yeah. first time. And so almost every week at Life Group – 
They're like, we watched this episode. It's amazing. <laughs> so it's been fun to relive that with Oh, them. that's fun. So, When was the last time you and Kate watched your Seinfeld? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Might be time. It might be time. Yeah. If you don't do it at least once every five years. Yeah. We've been we've been hitting up Parks and Rec. Mm. But uh, yeah, it is just fascinating. With I mean, Seinfeld is pre – really pre-internet or like – Barely beginning internet age. So well, no cell phones. No cell phones. Uh, they have some car phones in there, but yeah. yeah. But throughout the episodes, well, I, Andrew and I watched it recently, and I just kind of went like, you know, this would have been solved with a text message. Yeah, totally. Um, That's like a third of the plots mm-hmm. of if people had cell phones, this is not a story. Well, and that's why any good – mystery novel you read today that's set in the modern era, the first thing they have to do is say, I broke my phone. I lost yeah. my phone. There <laughs> yes. was no cell service out yeah. here. You yeah. know. Um and so it's like they have to they have to write in a device to get rid of cell service. Exactly. Because it ruins things. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, John, I'm tired of talking. I'm sure. Your voice <laughs> held up though. It did. But it's 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 tired. Mm. So we have talked Jets, Hard Knocks, preseason football. We've talked Ohio State not choosing a quarterback yet. We've talked spiritual mentors. We have talked Justin Gatlin. We have talked The Hike. We have talked a book manuscript that I submitted. And we even threw in a little Seinfeld discussion. So by definition, we have discussed our various and sundry topics. And so all that's left to say is, until next time, the Lord bless you all real good. Later. Later.